Chemistry isn't your ordinary lab experiment. It is a mix of many elements. In our case, that mix includes talent, insight, strategy, planning, smart clients, happy accidents, new technology, and old-fashioned hard work. Our nucleus is 35 strong and compatible with 45 agencies in 20 countries. Chemistry is the product of the merger between a few different agencies. Um, there was one agency called GBL, and they have been around. They have been around for since the 70s, many years. And GBL did a lot of traditional work. So they did print ads and um, traditional media. Then, separately, there was Space Boy. And Space Boy Interactive was a company that focused specifically on digital projects. And it all started with, I think, a shared space. These two companies decided that they would work together on some clients, and it ended up going really, really well. And so what they decided to do was to merge and rebrand as Chemistry. And, um, and then the two agencies started working together as chemistry on projects and doing integrated campaigns so they could do a print ad with a QR code that would drive to a microsite and um, you know they, they had like a full service shell. Um, then about a year and a half ago, chemistry acquired another company called Chrome and Chrome had other capabilities, like they had some B2B clients and they also had a PR department. And um, Chemistry acquired them and has then been able to grow um, our offerings to include B2B services and, and PR. So Chemistry has been around as the rebranded entity since um, 2000 and. 10, I believe, 2009, um, so about three or four years, and um, we're, you know, a completely integrated shop, so we can do a campaign from start to finish, like I said, that includes traditional media in magazines and newspapers, online, um, you know, a microsite, a landing page, a full website, banner ads, Facebook, social media, um, and, and PR, so publicizing everything that's going on as well. Um, we produce everything from a print ad, including you know, the messaging and the strategy behind it, the creative, and then actually placing it and checking to see that it was run properly and um, we also will build a microsite or a website from the ground up. Um, I just launched an iPad app that um, allows you to be at a trade show and talking to people, entering their information in the iPad and then having that information immediately uh, transfer to a television loop that was running in the trade show booth in the background. Um, so it was a way to engage people at a trade show, get them interested in the brand and the brand values, and then also stop by the booth and make sure they came and sampled products and saw what was going on at the booth because they wanted to you know, see themselves on camera, on, on the big screen. digital media, you probably have to start the process like you do with traditional media. You have to know who the audience is, what their media habits are, what their usage is, um, what the product is, as much as you can about the audience, including household income, um, geographic locations, number of kids in the household, as much as you can possibly know about whoever you're trying to sell something to. Um, and then for digital media, you would choose your sites that way um, based on what the usage is with that target audience. And generally, um, we would look at retargeted search or keyword optimization for consumer goods and then for 
business to business clients. It's usually e newsletters um, and digital versions of their trade magazines. So that's basically digital media. So I'm Jeremy Hedges, I'm an interaction designer here at Chemistry. Uh, what I do is I work throughout the entirety of projects, sort of from the beginning to the end, and I have sort of touch points throughout the projects. Um, the way that we do things here, we have sort of a 6D uh, approach to digital projects. So we have uh, start off with discovery, go into define, design, develop, what's the next one? Um, deploy and then drive. So those are sort of the six parts of our digital process. Um, I come in at the very beginning sort of from a strategic perspective in the discovery phase. Um, what we do is we try to learn as much as possible from the clients, uh, we call them stakeholders. So there's individuals at a particular client um, who know different things, different parts of their business. And so we talk to them, we have them sort of tell us the general overview of what they're doing what their business objectives are, who their audience are, who their perceived audience is. Um, and we take that information and we start doing research about uh, the project that we're going to be doing. So we um, go out and look at competitors, we'll look at Google Analytics for their current site if they have one. Um, if they don't, uh, we'll try to look at Google Analytics um, for other websites if we can. You know, if it's a specific project for a larger client, maybe we'll look at um, from their homepage what kind of audience they already have built in, things like that. We do user research, so we go out and talk to people um, and understand their needs and goals. And so what we do within the discovery phase is sort of take all that information and synthesize that, and we move into the define phase, which is uh, building sort of, in a, in a digital project anyway, a site map or a, a site structure, and that's called information architecture. So uh, understanding how the navigation is going to work, what the levels of navigation are, what we call those, and how people understand how things are structured. So we take that and test that with people and make sure that uh, they understand the way that we're labeling things and they can understand, you know, if I click here, this is where I'm going to find these other parts of the website. Um, from there, we build uh, wireframes or prototypes. So um, it's more of a blueprint uh, looking artifact. Um, so similar to what an architect would build, they don't really decide on the colors, um, the textures of the house, but they do build the infrastructure of it. So they make sure that all the parts that are in the bathroom are in the bathroom and not in the kitchen. So that's kind of what we do. Um, so we build what are wireframes and those are, they look like a website without any real colors or details. Um, well, they are detailed, but they don't have sort of visual details uh, included. So what that allows us to do is to start to take that and take it back to the client and have them say, you know, oh, well, we missed these things or, you know, we're not quite sure how we feel about this stuff. And then we can also put those in front of users and have them test it. So it's called paper prototyping. Uh, you can take a printout of a wireframe and show it to people and see if they understand the concepts that you're trying to get across. So between that and looking at the site map, um, we hopefully, before we start doing the visual design, which is the next part of our uh, 6D process, we actually get some feedback from real people and make sure that we kind of understand where we should be before we go through the creative process, which takes a lot longer. So from there, uh, we go into development and those artifacts that I build actually help the developer a lot because they can kind of see the way that the structure of the site's supposed to be built. So they can build sort of database structures and things like that, understanding functionality that they're gonna have to build in um, from an interaction standpoint. We try to bring all those interactive elements of a website or a web project um, to the forefront in the wireframe so that while the designer is doing the visual part, the developers can start to think about how the actual technical aspects of the site are going to be structured. So after that we do deploy um, and throughout the process uh, I also do quality assurance and testing. So um, once we have a working version of the site in the development phase, I'll actually take that and work, it, uh, work through all the browsers, all the different um, devices like tablets, uh, phones, and smartphones and everything to make sure that it actually works and to make sure that we've captured all the elements that we said we were going to deliver in the earlier artifacts and earlier stages. So as I said, I'm sort of with the project from the beginning to the end and making sure that really ultimately, you know, users are the people who are going to have to use the site. So making sure that their needs are met throughout um, the way that we build our projects. Any final thoughts?
that you'd like to give to kids that would be involved with stuff like this in there? Um, I think it's a growing field. I mean, the internet and computers and technology in general is a, a huge part of where things are headed. I mean, it's absolutely booming. I mean, I know there was the, the bubble that sort of burst in the late 90s and early 2000s, but it's actually better now because the things are more structured. There's more of a, um, an idea of how things are supposed to work. And from my perspective, you know, the websites that were built in the first really 10 or so, 15 years of the internet becoming a common thing for everybody were not always built in a way that took into account the people who were actually going to be using it. And now that's becoming a standard practice. So I think that, you know, the work that I do is extremely important and it's beginning to become acknowledged as being extremely important. And I think it's a, a humongous field of, for growth. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of opportunities and there's a lot of resources that exist for folks, books, websites, um, group, uh, online groups, but also in-person groups. Um, and so there's a lot of ways to get into it and you can come to it through a lot of different avenues in psychology, computer science, human computer interaction. Um, I did an uh, information science degree to get into this, but that was mostly doing programming and database stuff. So I kind of came to it from a technical background, um, but there's lots of different fields that actually fit into it, and it's actually a really neat combination of those different fields. So it's very exciting, and it's an exciting time. My name is Chloe Arthurs, and I'm an account executive at Chemistry. Uh, I've been here for two years, and I am a liaison between the clients and everyone internally at Chemistry. So I work with clients to devise a strategy, um, manage projects, work with them to get the assets for the projects, and then um, I take all that information and I present it to either a designer, a developer, an information architect, and um, see that we meet all of our deadlines and budgets. So, basically, it. My favorite part about my job is that um, every day is different. So, one day I might start my day off with a presentation about nutritional supplements um, and then within a few hours I'm talking about bank products. Um, the next day could be completely different. I might even be in another city. Um, just Friday I was working at the Pittsburgh Marathon Expo for one of my clients and we were interacting with people as part of a street team to get them engaged um, in the brand. So, every day is different. Okay, my name is Kevin Emmerheiser. They call me K2 here at Chemistry Interactive. I'm a senior interactive designer slash developer which means I kind of split roles. Um, I do both the visual design side as well as do front-end um, development. Um, front-end development meaning I code uh, the initial HTML, CSS, and then the jQuery interactions and stuff. Um, on my day-to-day the day -day basis, um, we either meet with a client to discuss a new project. Um, we'll uh, discuss future projects or existing projects with the client. Um, work day to day it's either since I'm split I'll either create concepts for a project um, or code for a project um, that could be anything from uh, a logo to uh, uh, a website to a portal to an interactive wizard step form could be anything interactive um, once uh, the client does approve that uh, we then start the coding process um, and once that's approved we then hand it to our um, back-end developers which then in infer them to a database. That's like a very quick kind of overview of what I do day to day, really. And it depends from project to project. It could be a, a digital design one day or one hour, then it could be a website the next hour, and it could be a logo the next hour. It's, it's for me, I, I get my hands on a little bit of everything.
what makes us different? Um, I read somewhere that companies have products and agencies in the same vein have cultures and that's what an agency can can really sell to someone looking to work there or even a client um, and, and that's how you work and how you work together and I think that chemistry has a really unique culture and that that really makes us different. Um, everyone here jokes around and we're friends and we have fun first um, so I think that that's a really important aspect of chemistry. Something that when people visit us and when they interact with us, you know, they're refreshed by it and it's not something that, that you see elsewhere. And it makes the work, whether it's fun work or, you know, difficult work, it makes it easier to do when you feel like you're doing it with friends. Working with clients can be stressful. Um, you know, it's there's a delicate balance between um, you know the time, the budget, and you know the end result. People joke that you can either have it good, fast, or cheap, and you can't have all three. So managing a client's expectations can be difficult because obviously you want to do something that's amazing and you want to do it really fast and you want to do it really well but at some point you have to prioritize those things um, and help helping to guide them to see that that prioritization needs to happen can be difficult sometimes um, Having them see where you're coming from and understand that um, maybe something that they wanted isn't possible in the time frame or the budget that they originally, you know, had discussed. Sometimes that can be difficult to go back back and ask for more time or more money um, or tell them that then otherwise it can't be done. So it can be difficult when you're dealing with clients just, you know, to. help make them understand um, like what that you are trying to do right by them um, but there's always a trade-off me personally I don't like when people don't like me and I don't like that feeling of knowing that someone is maybe not mad at me but maybe disappointed in me and and it may not even be me but since I'm the account executive um, I am the client representative and I conversely I am the agency representative so when I'm talking to a client if all the work that my team put in over the course of a month was fantastic I hear that and that's praise that comes directly to me that then I turn around and communicate to my team but they're talking to me they're saying that's fantastic you did a great job we love it we're so pleased that feels really good but on the flip side it doesn't feel very good when someone is sick and so they they miss a deadline by a day and that impacts someone else and then you know just a waterfall effect and maybe something bad happens you're the first person that they are talking to and they're telling the problem to and you know it doesn't feel good when you know you're saying the client is telling you that things didn't go so well um, which hopefully you you don't hear so often um, but every once in a while things happen so ultimately you do hear it and and it's it's not very fun and it's difficult and you have to kind of put that aside and you have to think all right this is just this is work I'm here to work and um, no one is going to lose sleep over 
a press release going out the next day as opposed to your target day. So. Where does chemistry sit in terms of our size? I would say we're a small to mid-size agency. Um, I have a friend that works at an agency of a similar size, um, but they run things very differently. Uh, they run things almost more like a larger agency with, um, you know, maybe more bureaucracy, you find. At a smaller agency, we're able to be really flexible, um, really, you know, almost informal with our process, which really, really can help a project. So from that perspective, it's, it's good. And, you know, I know everybody that I work with. I know their kids, their husbands and wives and everything about them. And so helping to build that, you know, kind of family feeling, that friendship between everybody since we're all so different. We all have such different backgrounds um, and very different interests. Working really, really closely on projects you know, adds to that. I would like to see chemistry doing work that we're really proud of, which I think we're doing now. Um, really interesting, creative, and um, strategic, research-based. We're currently doing all of this. It's just I want to continue doing it because uh, I think that when things are based in research and you know people are excited about the client and the creative, um, it's more fun. And you know, not everything is about awards, but it is nice to also be recognized for uh, the work that you do. And so we just recently, in March, we won an award for our own website that we designed. And I'd like to see that continuing. Chemistry works on a single atom, and that is something we don't forget.